Hello artists and future artists! This tutorial covers everything you need to start making your own 3D Warcraft art in Blender. It covers basic Blender navigation and functions, importing and prepping a character to be positioned, basic materials, binding items like weapons and shoulders to the character, and inverse kinematics. We'll need three things. The first is WoW Model Viewer. You go here, then Downloads, scroll down here, download and install it. Then Blender.org. Go to the latest version, download, then install. And last, you need to go to GitHub and get a Blender add-on named Xnalara Mesh by John07. Go to Clone, download Zip, and save it somewhere you should probably name Blender add-ons. When you open Blender for the first time, you won't have all these other items. I put them here for demonstration. This is the 3D viewport. Here we do most of our work. Let's see how to navigate it. We can zoom in and out with the mouse wheel. We can hold down the mouse wheel and rotate around selection. And we can hold down shift and the mouse wheel to pan. To select an object, left click it. It highlights bright orange. You can shift select the others to add selections and they turn orange too, but darker. They're all selected, but the one with the bright orange is the active one. You can type Alt A to deselect all. To see things directly from the font, we type 1 on the numpad. To look at them from the side, we type 3 on the numpad, and the top is 7. To toggle between orthographic and perspective view, we type 5 on the numpad. We can grab an object to move it. Let's select the cube. Type G to grab, drag it with the mouse wherever, and then left click to confirm. We can rotate an object. If we select Suzanne and move her over here, we can type R and rotate her. The rotation is view dependent. It changes according to our point of view. We can also scale. Let's get the torus. Type S to scale it. Shape it as we want and left click to confirm. Before we bring our character, let's discuss something called parenting. And it's not the thing with the diapers. I have this cube. I can move it here. If I select all the other objects, select the cube last, and then type Ctrl P, I can choose to parent all the other objects to it. Now we can see those relationship lines. If I select the mama cube and move it, scale or rotate it, the children will inherit any such transformation. If I place the cube here and take Suzanne and hit Alt P to unparent her, I can clear the parent and she will lose all the transformation she previously inherited from the mama cube. Sometimes we want that, sometimes we don't. If we want her to keep the transformation, all we have to do is Alt P again, but select Clear and Keep Transform, and she'll remain there, now unlinked. Up here we have the outliner. This is the command center of our file. I like having mine on view layer. Right now, mine shows all my various collections in here. I'm not going to talk about collections today, but there's plenty of tutorials out there. Right now, I'm in the parenting collection I made, but I'm going to close that one, and I'm going to do most of my operations here in the character collection. However, your file probably doesn't have the icons I have on the right. I like clicking on the filter here and then ticking 1, 2, 3, and 5. 1 represents the visibility. I can toggle it on or off. The other is selectability. If I untick this and click my cube, I can't select it, but the others are still selectable. And I can toggle the renderability of an object. If I untick the camera icon, my cube might be visible in the viewport, but it won't show up in the render. We're done with the basic Blender stuff, so let's hop into our model viewer. Make the character you want in our model viewer, then go to File, Export, Model, FBX, and save it. When asked if you want the animations, Unselect all, because right now we don't want the animations and they take quite a long time to export. Then click OK. Back in Blender, let's go to File, Import FBX, select the character, ignore anything else on this screen and click Import FBX. This looks like a mess, but we'll clean it quickly. The strange white pillars are bones, also called skeleton, armature or rig, and that's what we're going to use to move the body. Make sure you have the armature selected and type R, Z, minus 90, Enter to rotate it to face us. 
Up in the outliner, these inverted triangles are all the items we brought in, weapon, shoulders, etc. We'll hide them for now and fix them later. The body is parented to the armature, and the armature is parented to the empty. Let's click this little triangle to show all the empty's children. Click this little triangle to show all the armature's children. Then select the armature, type Alt-P, and clear and keep transformation. Now let's hide the armature. Hide the body. We already hid everything else, so we're left with a bunch of empties we don't need. Let's hit A to select everything, X to delete, and confirm. Let's talk about the visibility of the armature and the body. Now for cleaning the armature. I used to do this manually, with moving bones to test which one was useful and which was as useless as a disciplined priest in Legion, and then aligning them all manually and accurately, and it was a pain in the backside. Turns out you don't need to do that. There's a shortcut. I got introduced to that by Nintheria, who learned it from Lady Zomki and so on and so forth. So here goes, something to fix the whole skeleton in two minutes tops. To do that, we need to enable the add-on we downloaded, XNLR Mesh. Go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, Install, navigate to where you saved the zip file, select it, still unzipped, click Install, and then to find it, type in the search bar, XNLR, find it and tick it. Blender saves your installed add-ons, so this will now always be part of your Blender. With that done, right-click the armature to select it, shift-left-click the body to add it to the selection, and go to File, Export, Exnalara, ASCII. Save it somewhere. We can now get rid of the armature, because we'll soon have a new one perfectly arranged. Let's unparent the body from it. Alt-P, Clear and Keep Transform. And to remove the armature, you can just right-click it in the outliner and select Delete. Let's hide the body mesh for a moment. Go to File, Import, Exnalara, navigate to where you saved it, and click Import. It shows up in our file in a new collection, which we don't really need. So let's move the armature out of there, left-click and drag it to the Scene collection. What we have left in the collection is all the body parts colored bright pink, which is Blender's way of screaming at us that there's missing textures but we saved the body mesh from before with the textures, so we can simply delete this whole collection. Right-click it in the outliner and select Delete Hierarchy. This leaves us with a nice clean armature. All we need to do is link the body mesh with this armature, and that's very easy. Left-click the body, shift-click the armature, then type Control p with empty groups. Now I can disable the body's selectability for comfort. Select the armature, and on the top left, change mode to Pose Mode, which means we can only affect the bones. Then if we select a bone and type R to rotate it, voila. We can also move and scale bones, so we can pose the character however we want, and that's the basis for everything you need to make Warcraft pictures with Blender. Let's hide the armature to take a look at the items we brought. Here's the weapon. Let's position it in his hand. We can type 7 to view this from above, rotate it, grab it over here, bring it up and put it in place. The last item is the buckle. Let's type R, Z, minus 90, enter, so it's facing us, and pull it up to where it should be. Right now these items aren't connected to the armature, so let's do that. Display the armature, go to pose mode, and select the bone to which you want to connect the item. Let's say the weapon goes on the palm bone. So when the hand moves, the weapon moves with it. With the bone still selected, switch to Object Mode. Select the weapon, shift left click to add the armature to selection, type Ctrl P to make parent, but this time select the option Bone. Now when we go to Pose Mode and move his hand bone, the weapon follows. Let's do the same with the shoulders. In Pose Mode we can select the clavicle, switch to Object Mode, select the shoulder, shift left click to also select the armature, Control p to make parent, and Bone. We can now switch back to Pose Mode and test this. The buckle is a different thing because it doesn't always have a bone of its own, so let's make one for it. I'm going to grow that bone from this one, the pelvis bone. With it selected, let's switch to Edit Mode. The colors vanish, and we're left with regular white and yellow to show which bone is selected. We can click and select any other bone, but for this case, let's stick with this one and select the very tip of it, only the tip. Type numpad 3 to go to side view, and then E to extrude. We just created a bone. 
Now we can type G to grab and position it where it belongs. We have our bone for the buckle, and if we go back to pose mode, select the bone, switch to object mode, select the buckle, select the armature, control P and then bone. We connected the buckle to the bone. And when we switch to pose mode, we can see that the buckle moves with it. Since we grew it from the pelvis bone, it should move with it. But it doesn't. When I created this bone, I thought it was connected to the pelvis. But if it's not, we need to parent the buckle bone to the pelvis bone, and we already know about parenting. So, in edit mode, select the buckle bone, then shift left click the pelvis bone, type control P to parent, and select keep offset. Now when we switch to pose mode and move the pelvis bone, the buckle will move with it. We have all the items connected, so let's go back to object mode and hide the armature so we can fix those materials because they really don't look so good. So let's take a look at the weapon. Down here is the properties panel, and when we select the material tab, we can see all the materials on our selected object. The weapon has three materials, but if we open the preview panel here, we can see they're all identical, so we can unify them. If I hit minus and delete this material, all the vertices that had this material will instead inherit the material above it in the list. You'll see in a moment why this matters. For now, I can just click minus on those and delete the spares, and I have the material sorted, except it looks terrible. To fix that, we scroll down in here to surface and move the metallic and specular sliders down all the way. Already it looks better. Let's do the same for the other items. The buckle only has the one material. Scroll down and take down the metallic and specular. Do the same with the shoulders, and now the body. The body has as many materials as separate body parts brought from one model viewer, but many are identical. Let's unify those by selecting the top one and clicking the minus button until all the identical materials are unified to one, and we can also double click it to rename it. Body. Here, if I delete this hair, it will inherit the material above it, aka the body, and we get something very silly looking. Instead, let's delete the bottom one of the two hair materials so it inherits the one above it, which is identical, the hair. Click minus, and we can also rename it hair. Now we only have two materials to deal with, so let's go to body and remove the metallic and specular, then hair and remove the metallic and specular. We're nearly done. If we select the body and go to edit mode, the shortcut for edit mode is tab, we can see we have many loose vertices. We can get rid of them by going to mesh, clean up, delete loose. Now let's click A to select everything and select mesh, clean up, merge by distance. This merges any vertices that were overlapping each other completely. Let's click tab to exit edit mode and do the same with all the other items together. Hit A to select them all Click tab to get them all in edit mode at once, then mesh, clean up, delete loose, then A to select everything again, and mesh, clean up, merge by distance. Click tab to exit edit mode. The last thing we need to do is fix the materials that might look weird. Let's hide the armature for now and look at the buckle. It's got those weird black blotches. The weapon also doesn't look quite right, and what's supposed to be the weapon's glow doesn't look great at all. To fix these, we need to go a little deeper into Blender. Up here, where you can't see any indication that it exists because Blender is trying to kill you, if you place your cursor here, you can see that it turns into a little target. Left click here and drag. It creates another window which can display anything you want. This will happen anytime we click and drag in a corner, so we can fill our workspace with windows and get very, very confused. To collapse these windows back, we can't simply left click and drag them onto each other. You see, our cursor just becomes this no entry sign. That's because you can only collapse windows where there is the same number of windows. So we need to collapse this one into this one, that one into that one, I'm left clicking and dragging. You can see we get this big arrow overlay, and with my mouse button held down, I can move and choose which window to collapse into which. Let's collapse them all, and make this window into the shader editor. Here we navigate just like the viewport. Shift and middle mouse click to pan. You can even zoom in and out with the scrolling. With the buckle selected, to get rid of the black blotches, we select this top node, which is the image texture, which we got from Blizzard, and then we go here on the right to properties and change the alpha to none. Now the buckle looks okay. If you don't see the menu on the right, click N like Neltharian. Let's see what we can do about the weapon. We have it selected. 
to begin with. I think it looks a little weird. So let's check whether it has an alpha channel on it or not. An alpha is just transparency. And it looks very weird when it's not supposed to be transparent. Click N. With the texture node selected, go to Properties, Alpha, and change it to None. Now the metal looks better. We can collapse this window now because we don't need it anymore. There's a way to make the glow transparent and even glowy, but I don't want to overload this tutorial with more information than's comfortable, so for now I'll just get rid of it. Select the weapon, click Tab to edit mode, click Alt-A to deselect everything, and now we could go manually selecting the glow vertex by vertex, or we can take the easy way, which is selecting one vertex and then hitting Ctrl Numpad Plus several times, which expands the selection. With all of it selected, click X to delete and confirm. Let's do the same now with this glow. Select a vertex on each purple cap, Ctrl plus to expand the selection, and then X and confirm to delete. I'm going to leave the glow on the nozzle for now. The character is ready to make art with. Let's bring back the armature and drag it up into this collection. I like renaming all the items for easier navigation. You can now untick the selectability for all of them, collapse this hierarchy because they're all parented to the armature, so we only need to control the armature, and our gnome is ready to be posed. Let's do that. This is all very nice, but we're missing two things. A background with all the items, terrains, buildings and whatnot, but that's covered in another tutorial about using the Marlamin and Kuritna WoW export tools. There's a link in the description. And the other thing I'm missing is comfort. Posing a character's limbs like that isn't always comfortable, so let's see another way. To reset the pose, we need to be in Pose Mode and click A to select all the bones, then Alt-G, Alt-R, and Alt-S to reset any grabbing, rotation, or scale we did on the bones. Now we can set up this armature with something called Inverse Kinematics. While with Forward Kinematics, we have to start posing from, say, the shoulder, and then proceed down. With inverse kinematics, we can move the wrist and then the rest of the arm will follow. I think this makes the character much more comfortable to pose and I can't imagine trying to work without it anymore. First, we need to make the IK bones. IK stands for inverse kinematics. We need one in each ankle, knee, wrist, and elbow. We can't edit the armature in pose or object mode. We need to do this in edit mode. It turns all yellow to indicate all the bones are selected. Click Alt-A to deselect everything, and let's see which bones we can grow our new IK bones from. These two bones here are in my way, so I'm selecting them, clicking Ctrl plus to expand the selection to get the whole bone, then H to hide them. Let's do the same with the feet bone. Selecting the end of the shin bone, just the end, not the whole bone, on the side view we can click E and then Y to extrude along the Y axis. Left click to confirm. We can unhide the bones we hid with Alt-H and hide these confusing bones instead, again with H. Let's select only the ends of the femurs. Numpad 3 for a side view and then E to extrude and Y for the Y axis. Drag them and left click to confirm. Let's do the same with the wrists, then the elbows. Hiding annoying bones, extruding IK bones and then unhiding what we hid until we have something like this. Now we need to go to each of those eight new bones, go to the Bone menu in the Properties panel, and untick Deform and remove the parent. Do this for all those new IK bones. Going back to Pose mode, personally I don't enjoy the coloring of the bone sets that XNLR generates. For me they're just visually confusing. So if you want to remove the colors, go to the Armature tab, Bone Groups, select the bottom one, and then repeatedly click the minus to delete them all. This clears the colors. I like to select all my IK bones and give them a bone group of their own. With them all selected, I click the plus, give the group a name, click assign, and then give them a distinct color, because in a full picture they're easy to lose visually. With them ready, we can now set up the IK. Click the ankle IK bone, shift left click to also select the shin bone, then type Control shift c inverse kinematics. Let's make the other leg. Select the ankle IK bone then the shin bone, Control shift c inverse kinematics. Now the hand, the same, and the other hand. You got it. 
We can move the leg now, but it will pull the entire body with it, because the IK influence now goes all the way up. What we want to do is limit the chain length. For example, have this IK bone only pull one, two bones. So let's select this bone, go to the Properties Bone Constraint tab, and select the chain length, and set the chain length to two. Let's do the same to all the rest. Now if we move the bone, only two bones are pulled with it. The knee and elbow IK bones are called pole bones, and just like a compass points to the North Pole, these bones will tell our IK chain where to point, so we can avoid things like this, because it looks really painful. So let's set up the pole targets. Click the shin bone. In the bone constraints menu, click the eyedropper, use it to select the armature, at which point Blender says, hey, in this entire armature, which bone would you like me to point at? So we need to specify this one. If we click it in pose mode, we can see its name on the upper left. It's 9.001. Let's select the shin bone again. And in our empty bracket here, type the bone name, 9001. The armature will twist, but that's very easy to fix. Go here to pole angle and rotate it back to approximately the right place. Now the other side. Shin bone, eyedropper, click anywhere on the armature. Notice this bracket turned red to indicate to us that it's missing the specific bone to point at. Click on the pole bone, see it's called 11.001, and type it in place. Now tweak the pole target until it looks right. Do the same for the arms. The last thing to do is in edit mode. Take the pole bones a little further from the body, elbows and knees as well. I also like to parent the poles to their limbs IK bone, otherwise I sometimes lose them in the picture mess. So select the left knee pole, shift click the left ankle IK bone, Control P and keep offset. Do the same with all the others. With the IK set, we can now switch to pose mode, select the IK bone, move it wherever, and using the pole bone, we can control where the knee will point. My armatures usually end up looking more like this, with custom bone shapes so the bones don't hide the expression on the face, with the moustache, fingers, feet and everything properly aligned, with custom rigging for common items like weapons, pouches, jewelry and so on. From this point on, the sky's the limit. There's free tutorials about anything Blender all over the internet, and just like I learned almost 100% of what I know by googling things, you can learn to make skies, sets, spells, effects, camera tricks, procedural textures, fancy materials, and a very long, long list after that. If you prefer a more personal approach, you can ask me questions during my streams on Twitch, and join my Discord art server where people ask questions, flaunt their pretty art, or ask each other for feedback. You're welcome to drop by. The community is small and wonderful. Let's all make pretty art. <laughs>